at the Bon Solon Annual Expert Witnesses Conference. What's the key message that you'd like to give to the experts today? Well, I came along to this because of all the recent controversy over shaken baby syndrome, which is something I've dealt with in America in death penalty cases for many years. And the legal term we have for it in America is, is total bullshit. And it terrifies me to see how the way the British legal system approaches something like that. Because when you say in the courtroom that people are, are going to be sanctioned for challenging what's considered science, what that means is Galileo gets burnt at the stake and uh, we end up having theories about the Earth being the centre of the universe for far too long. And there were criticisms of, of the expert that we're just talking about today. Um, what would you think about those criticisms, that she was uh, biased and so on? Well, when they say that Wayne Squire was biased, um, she has a point of view. I happen to think her point of view is way closer to the scientific truth than the point of view that's shared by the majority of experts in this field, who, in my view, are biased. And now, you know, they have the right to be biased, but what a courtroom should be about is about determining what science is before it's allowed in there to confuse both jurors and judges. Uh, and I'm afraid that's not what happens in this country. So would you say then that the requirement that you have a, a sort of known expertise is, uh, is, is a, a fetter on the ability to express views that might be outside the norm? The problem in Britain is not that an expert should have a known expertise. Yeah, you should have a known expertise. The problem is that the expertise should be a valid expertise. And in America, under the Dobit case, in theory at least, and let's face it, we get it wrong a lot, um, in theory, the proponent of a scientific proof has to prove that it's valid before it's allowed in the courtroom. And now, if you did that with shaken baby syndrome, for example, they wouldn't get in the courtroom. And what's particularly frightening is I got obsessed with this because I was a scientist in my earlier life uh, in, in a death penalty case involving forensic error analysis. Uh, and when you look over the last 160 years of the use of forensic error analysis, it was assumed to be valid all those years. And yet in my career, uh, at least 40 people have been executed based on forensic error analysis. I've challenged it for a long time because I thought it was unscientific. And I don't mean to say I told you so, but last year the FBI finally admitted that in more than 90% of cases they'd misled the jury. Now I think they did it in 100% of cases actually. Uh, because they believed it was real science when it wasn't. There's a logic to the problem of forensic science, and that is that there is no one out there who is coming into court uh, as an expert in forensic hair analysis who's prepared to testify that actually I look down a binary microscope all day long and it's total nonsense and I'm wasting my time. There are no two sides to most forensic sciences, which means that it's, it's not science. So, uh, to what extent do you think there should be uh, a debate about that because isn't the difficulty that, that it's sort of assumed that this is the position and that's the convictions follow from that and it's only when something a uh, court makes a particularly different decision that you get a different opinion on a particular um, view on a particular area of science for example. Well, I think what you have to do in a sensible forensic science world is you have to have a broad-based discussion before it ever gets anywhere close to a courtroom in a jury or in a family court, a broad-based discussion about whether this is scientifically valid. And you need to listen to all sides and you don't need to tell experts that if they dissent they're going to get struck off uh, because that's the way that you crush dissent and that's the way that we maintain flat earth society ideas for far too long. So it, it, it's really then the work that's done before the expert really walks into a courtroom and puts forward that view by the by that particular area, in that particular area of expertise that's no, crucial? No, it's not that. It's that experts should walk into the courtroom long before they ever walk into the courtroom to testify in front of a jury. They should walk into the courtroom to justify that what they're going to say is really science. And the person, the, the side, whether it be the government or the defence, that wants to propose that expertise needs to prove it's valid, it's their burden of proof. We don't have that here for the most part. What we do is we have the medical profession, you know, the, the hierarchy saying shaken baby syndrome is valid and anyone who disagrees gets struck off. Well, that's absurd. So what I think the, the survey done by you guys shows is that when you start intimidating dissenters, people who disagree with the majoritarian view, 
what you do is eliminate them from the courtroom altogether and you make absolutely sure that the courtroom is full of people saying that uh, the sun revolves around the earth for the next hundred years. I don't know if you know how long it took for the Catholic Church to admit that Galileo was right. They didn't do it for 300 years until 1982. And that's because they took the view that's somewhat akin to what we're seeing in the courtroom on Wayne Square. So Dr. Square, who I have immense respect for, I should reveal my bias, I think she's a, a wonderful, talented doctor. Um, Dr. Square's case is going to act as just the same disincentive even though she wasn't struck off anymore, she was not allowed to testify for three years and she'll never be allowed to testify again after what they wrote about her. So it has the same impact on doctors. We will find no doctor willing to come forward and question shaken baby syndrome. Even though the last time I gave a talk to a bunch of doctors about this, there wasn't a single person in the room who was willing to stand up and, and defend shaken baby syndrome as a science. So, you know, with me, the willing to say they think it's all nonsense, there were 200 of them, but none of those 200 people are going to be willing to go in a courtroom. So it's a sort of chilling effect on the evidence that a, an expert witness is prepared to give, that sort of pressure? Well, if you call the, the Antarctic chilling, yeah. It's a freezing effect. It's way more than chilling. There's just not going to be anyone who does it. And we have this just at the same time as Sweden, for example, is holding a whole review of this, which I suspect in the next few weeks, it's going to say shaken baby syndrome is not science. So other countries, America as well, are really questioning the whole process. The Los Angeles uh, district attorney has just instituted a process where their number one question of wrongful convictions is shaken baby syndrome. And here in Britain, we're saying no one can question it. It's madness.